Welcome back to the Engineered Angler. Part five of the getting a reflective metal surface on your lure. Hopefully you've seen part one through four and I can get through this without boring you to death. Stick around. I was fully intending to do a demonstration of spray chrome and I got out my spray chrome kit and I discovered a sad reality and that is that my actual chrome spray evaporated. I guess I spent a little bit too much time in that hot garage but what I can do is explore what I used to do, the methods I used, and the things I found sort of marginal as far as quality and difficulty. So let's go back to this dry erase board and I'll go ahead and list the steps. A lot of the steps are similar to the stuff for the silver plate. So if you're making your lures out of uh, resin, be sure you cure that resin completely. Even if, you're, if you've got a wooden uh, lure blank and you've got it sealed, make sure you let it sit and let it cure. Step two, if you're gonna put paint on your lure blank as a base color for your chrome, be sure to paint it now. This is the step to paint it in. If you're gonna use super chrome, it's best to use black. Uh, on silver, white works really well and violet works really well. Step three is get a gloss coat. You've got to have a lure with a completely glassy gloss finish. However you get that. I'm gonna show you a couple ways I do it. The kits that you buy come with methods to actually get that gloss coat, both super chrome and the silver plate. Okay, step four, let that gloss coat cure. This is really important actually. Both of the, the methods of getting this silver plate on there or this metallic uh, finish on there, uh, is really dependent on having a really cured surface. You, you don't want any fumes coming up and ruining that surface. Step five, go ahead and apply your uh, metallic coat, whether it's super chrome or silver plate. The techniques are totally different, but this is the point where you actually apply it. Everything else before this are the same for both of those techniques. From here forward, it gets a little different. Okay, step six, and this is actually the last step in the specialty part of this, that's apply a protective coating. This is different for the two methods. So I'll cover that difference more for the silver plate than for the super chrome, but I'll let you know what super chrome is about too. I'm not gonna be able to go completely through the process on the super chrome. Let's go ahead and dig into this kit and I'll show you how that actually works, what the components are and when you apply them. First of all, it comes with a what they call a primer and this primer is essentially a clear coat it's just that really heavy catalyzed two-part clear coat it's kind of like a resin but it's uh, thin enough to spray you apply it with a spray gun and then you allow that surface to set up for at least three to seven days one of the things you're going to realize with super chrome is there's nothing that's water-based everything takes uh, solvents to clean up after that's one of the big turnoffs for me the next step would be if i had any of this stuff is the super chrome 54x this is actually the chrome you apply and you can see that this tip has kind of gone a little mirrory and it looks a little chromey the nice thing is it it's thin enough to apply with a, an airbrush and that makes it very nice for small pieces like lures. The next step is to protect that finish you just put on and you have to use a coating that's friendly to that surface. Uh, Super Chrome is a little more forgiving but not much than silver. Silver is absolutely unforgiving. You have to have the exact kind of material to put on it. They send you this, it's called a mid-clear. It's essentially a one-part clear coat. Yeah, you can thin it to spray it. And then the, the last thing you do is apply a top coat. And that's after you paint it, or if you, if you leave it just chrome, you can just apply this directly. But this goes on over the mid-coat. And you apply it with a spray gun, and you have to thin it pretty heavily to do that. That's the system. 
The drawbacks are that it's difficult to clean up after this stuff. You've got to be prepared with some decent spray guns. You really can't use the air brush for anything other than the actual spray chrome finish. Let's move on to the silver plating. Okay, so whenever you buy either one of these kits, it comes with everything you really do need, uh, but some of the steps are a little, uh, a little complex and the clear coats that they send you are a little difficult to apply and difficult to clean up after. Um, I did like two years worth of experimentation with a bunch of different types of clear coats and, and uh, mid coats to protect the silver and I finally came up with something that worked and even still I, I run into problems and sometimes it's just a bad day to apply silver. I'm going to put together a little montage of fast motion. It'll get us through step three. Stick around. Let me show you what comes in the kit when you buy one. First, this big old uh, container I, I actually put together so that I could have, uh, this is a, a coating booth or a painting booth. What comes is these concentrated fluids. You get the R part, which is the reactant, and then you get the uh, A part, which is essentially the silver nitrate or the silver solution. You're going to find that when you get these concentrated solutions to uh, mix them with water, the, uh, the ratios are usually pretty high. It's, this is 100 to 1. These I ordered from an offshore company, kind of sketchy. Uh, they come, sometimes they come with very poorly sealed and very poorly contained chemicals and you can smell them coming. <laughs> so when they leave it in your, in your post box, you know what it is. Okay, the third chemical set that comes with the kit is the activator, and this is uh, essentially a wetting agent. It, uh, it's, I, I think it's a pretty, pretty stout acid. Uh, it, it breaks the surface tension on the water, allows the water to completely sort of coat the, uh, the lure without beading. And since all those other solutions are cut or diluted with, um, with water, they act like water. So uh, they want to bead on a, on a very shiny surface like that. They want to bead. You need to break that surface tension. That's what does it. Uh, so mixing this is step one. This is probably the part that's most like mechanically difficult. And that is spraying both solutions at the same time, have, having them hit the surface of the lure at the same time. Uh, this is what you get. This is what comes with the um, with the kit and actually it's a pretty nicely made little duplex gun. Uh, it just has a, a pickup tube and just uh, pulls the fluid out of the two jars. I basically downsized the design. Uh, essentially I have two little jars, two, uh, two ounce pickup jars that are just standard airbrush jars. This is fuel hose that I adapted to this. And then in here, you can barely see, but uh, I, you can see the red in there. That's actually the little plastic spray tubes you get from a, from a lubricant can like WD-40. I just cut them, stuck them in there, and then I put the fuel hose over it. The other thing you're gonna need is a good sprayer. This just has water in it. Uh, you use 
quite a bit of uh, denatured water, but it's cheap. You can get it at any grocery store. It's just distilled water. The kits do also, just like the Super Chrome, they do come with a two-part um, clear spray to, to set the base and a clear coat to protect it. Those two-part spray clears are pretty bad for you. You've got to wear a respirator, a good respirator, and have a good ventilated booth. I try to stick to uh, just standard epoxies. Let me just write some things down on the dry erase board so you can follow along. Okay, step one is to mix the activator. That's that little tiny jar. Um, this you have to do just before, uh, or just a few hours before you actually do the spraying, because it has a, a shelf life or a bench life uh, that starts at about four hours after you mix it and ends about uh, two or three days after you mix it. Leave it overnight and then you can utilize it. Okay, the next step is to mix the R and A solutions. Those are the, those concentrated bottles. Uh, they mix 100 to 1, 100 parts water, one part concentrate. Part three is, is to set up the gun and test it. I usually put a little bit of water in the jars and run it to make sure, that, make sure it's pulling from both jars at about the same rate. Okay, the next step is to spray those lures down really well. I do them one at a time as I'm doing them. Spray them down with that uh, distilled water. Okay, step five is apply activator. So after I've got that activator mixed, all the instructions will tell you to put it in a spray bottle, spray it, and then you mist it off with water again, and then you spray it again, and you mist it off until the water actually uh, sheets onto the, um, onto the lure. Uh, and then you got about a minute and a half to apply the silver or else it stops being activated. So, <laughs> But instead of spraying, I dip. It's just easier um, and it wastes less and it puts less of that stuff in the air. So I, I'll, I'll mix a small jar and then I'll just dip the lure in it, spray it off, dip the lure in it, spray it off. Step six is to apply the silver. And that's real straightforward. You just shoot it straight out of the gun, get, mist it, let it sit for about 30 seconds, rinse it with water and then do it again until you get the finish you want. You gotta be careful not to overdo it because it will start going black on you. It'll go to like a, a black pearl, black chrome kind of look. And then you rinse it really, really well. Step seven is to dry and then you have about 24 hours. I wouldn't go more than 24 hours between the dry time and the time you clear coat over that silver because it will start to tarnish. So you apply a mid coat, which is not the final clear coat at the end, but a, a coat in between that will, that will protect it from uh, oxidation, from tarnishing. Right, let's go straight to it. Too much pressure will actually blow this silver plate right off the surface. So the idea is to get enough to mix, enough to get this fluid flowing, but not so much that you get a bunch of overspray or blast off the, the silver spray. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think it's running pretty accurate. Uh, I already uh, diluted the concentrates. This is R and this is A, obviously. Uh, this goes directly into these bottles. Got a little silver piece of tape and silver piece of tape on the bottle, the cap and the bottle match. You can't flip these. You can't use them for one thing and then use it for another uh, without really washing them down really well because that reactant will ruin your, uh, your mix. I have my water handy. I'm gonna go ahead and, and do a black one and a white one just as a demonstration. The rest I'll do off camera. Okay, so here I'm going ahead and rinsing off the activator that I just applied by dipping. So we're going to go in a little bit of fast motion here. So I'm repeating the process. Now I'm going to place it right in my holder, get all that activator off. And here I'm spraying on the silver plate and rinsing it off. I usually give the solution about 15 to 30 seconds and here I'm just repeating the process over and over until I get a really good shiny silver plate. I'm showing how little material I've used. Final rinse off. And now I'm drying it. This is very low pressure air, maybe 10 psi, just to get all those water droplets off. And there you go. 
that's the final product before I put the mid coat on. I'm pointing out a little bit of a blemish. You can see how really reflective it is. You can actually see the GoPro camera and myself in there. Okay, let's do a white one. Here, I'm just dipping it in the activator, just getting started. Okay, let's get that activator off. Start getting some silver on it. You can see it starts out a little blotchy. I look like I'm a little bit in a hurry and putting too much silver on at a time. I end up concentrating a little too much on the tail and it ended up with a little bit of a problem that you'll see in a minute. There it is, right there. You can see it. Just a dark spot. That's too much silver. So now I'm drying it. You gotta dry it to get all those water droplets off. Otherwise, you'd never get the drops stains off. So I'm pretty happy with that. It's got a good reflective surface. And I can probably do something with that dark tail with some paint just to camouflage it. Let's do another one. This one looks like it's starting out pretty nicely. Not too blotchy. Yeah, it's going on good. Pretty happy with that. And there I'm showing I did three with half of what I thought I would use. Let's get the water droplets off. Very, very low pressure. Well, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, I finished. Uh, let's see, how many did I get? Six. But these came out pretty nice. Uh, chrome is really hard to photograph, so I'm hoping that uh, you actually get a feel for how reflective they are. They actually get a little more reflective, a little more silvery after a few hours. So I'm going to let them sit for a little bit. And then, then I'll put the protective coat on them, but that's gonna have to be part 5B. This video is gonna be way too long. All right, thanks for watching.